I have tried various resume tools, but nothing beats Apple Keynote, especially for recreating online templates, experimenting with different versions, or making later edits. To get started, open Apple Keynote, go to File, New, and select a blank presentation. Delete the placeholders. Now all Apple Keynote presentations are set up as landscape, which will not work for a letter size resume. We need to change its layout first. Go to Document icon at the top right, scroll down to Slide Size and select Custom Slide Size. I already did the calculations for you and you need to specify 612 points for width and 792 points for height. Now this presentation is set up for letter size paper. Not all of us are born designers, but most of us need a resume. To get some design ideas, search Google for beautiful resumes, filter for images, and right click on any you like to save to your files. Another good place for resume design ideas is Canva. You can use it for free. Search for resumes or click the resume category and pick few resume templates that you like. Save them to your files. Now let's go back to our Keynote file. I'm going to select all the resume templates that I saved and drag them to Keynote slides. Make sure you don't paste it on the slide area, but rather on the left in the thumbnail area. This is a great little trick to get each resume placed on a separate page. We are ready to start designing. I am going to add few more blank pages for my work area. To start adding text, I will click on the text box at the top. All the text formatting options are under the format icon at the top. I like using the keynote paragraph styles, which is a quick way to uniformly format text throughout your file. It takes a little bit more time investment, but it will save you a lot of time down the road when you want to change your styles. Once I select the title style, it formats my name in the predefined way, which I can change and update. For my name, I would like to have the text adjust to the text box without having to increase and decrease the font size. Here is another neat trick. Select your text box. Notice that there are two handles here, right now, on the left and one on the right. Go to Format and scroll down to Shapes and Lines and select Reset Text and Object Handles. Now the text box has eight handles all around and under Text, Layout, you will notice a new option to auto-size your text. It makes sense to auto-size unique content in your Keynote files like your name but it doesn't make sense to use this option on text that needs to remain consistent across the file. For those sections, use manual size adjustment and rely on updating styles. I'm going to add a position title under the second predefined style and modify it. If I change this text to auto sizing, be aware that the font size is not updated based on your text box adjustment. Then I'm going to add a professional summary by pasting a lorem ipsum placeholder text. Notice that in order to paste text and keep the current text box style, you can use the Shift plus Option plus Command plus V keyboard shortcut. I will use the body text style on this, modify the font and or resize it and update the body paragraph style. So next time I use it, it will stay consistent. Now I'm going to design the main block of my resume experience. I will spend a lot of time on this block because I will reuse it for other sections in the resume. To control the text indents, go to text under format and scroll down to bullet and list under style. If there is a list in your text box, the indents are controlled here. Otherwise, they would be under layout. I will make the heading style for each section bold and save it under a new paragraph style. To adjust the line spacing, go to Spacing under Text Style. I can adjust the text box size to try different layouts for my resume. Now I'm going to show you two different ways of adding a line under the section title. I can go to Shapes at the top and add a line, which I can format under Style and Increasing Length. If I wanted the line to always stay with my text block, I would have to group it under Arrange. 
However, there will be a lot of grouping and ungrouping when you modify this block and I found that this way of adding the line requires too much work. The way I prefer adding a line under my heading is by selecting it, going to text, layout and selecting a bottom border under paragraph borders. I can also modify it offset from the text here. I find this a much easier way of keeping the line with the text block. Now I'm going to spend some more time on this text block by fixing the spacing between the lines, bolding the company name and adding italics to job title and dates. Then for the description, I will add text bullet points. You can control the spacing between the text and the bullet point. Don't be afraid to manually adjust the numbers in the alignment and indent boxes to find the perfect fit. Once I'm happy with my section, I will make a copy for another job description. Now I'm going to create another resume section by selecting the experience block and pressing option while dragging. This is the quickest way to duplicate objects in Keynote. Then I'm going to update the block with education information. I will adjust the width of the text box as I will want to add skill information to the right. I will now make a copy of my education section to create a reference or any other section you may want. In Keynote, once you type in an email or web address, it automatically underlines it. To remove the underline, select the text and go to Text Style. Let's say that at this point or in a few months, you want to update the style of your resume. I can make a change to one of my text lines and then go to the corresponding paragraph style and update it so the change is applied to all the sections with that style. However, the sections that have multiple styles on one line, you will have to update manually. To check that the resume sections are perfectly aligned, go to Arrange and Align drop-down option to align it to the left. The distribute option is better for objects such as shapes, which we will use shortly. Our resume is not finished without adding our contact information so that people can get in touch with us. Once I add my information, I will add some indent so that I can add icons on the left. I'm going to copy this section to another slide page so that I have more room to work. Under shapes, you can find some basic icons by either browsing or searching. Once I have the icons there, I can select them all to resize, but sometimes that doesn't work until you group them first. I'm going to line up the icons next to my contact information. Once I'm satisfied, I will make another copy and add my email and social media links. You can upload your social media icons by dragging them onto the slide. Then I will try to resize them uniformly and line them up against the social media links. To modify the images, the black surrounding squares lets you crop the image, while the white squares let you resize it. While I'm working on this, I'm doing a lot of grouping, so I want to find what is the keyboard shortcut for that by going to Menu and finding that option. The shortcut is Option Command G, which I will use from now on. Once I'm happy with my contact information, I will copy it over to our main resume page. Another thing that you may want to add to your resume is a profile image. First, let's go to shapes and pick either a circle or a square. With a circle, to resize it uniformly, press shift while resizing. Then I'm going to find the headshot image that I want to have on my CV and place it on top of my shape so it fills it. Then I'm going to adjust the size of my image and flip its direction on the Arrange and Rotate section. In Keynote, it is super easy to change your resume layout and move sections around. You can easily make a copy of your page and try different variations. One more section to create, the Skills and Expertise section. I will copy my text block to a new page so I have more workspace. You have probably seen the trend of indicating your expertise level visually with icons. I will show you a few tricks how to create a couple of designs and the process will be similar for other variations. First, I'm going to pick a shape and change its color by selecting the color tool at the top. Then I'm going to make a copy by selecting the object and dragging while pressing the option key. 
I will color the second copy in another color for my resume. Now I will stack the two colored shapes on top of each other and go to Arrange menu to specify which one I want to be in front. I will resize the darker shape over my lighter one to indicate skill level. Since I have five skills listed, I will make five of these visual indicators. Once they're grouped, I will select them all and go to Arrange and Distribute Evenly. Then I will group and resize it to match my text. Another variation of this design is to have the icons on the left and the text on the right. All you have to do is to ungroup the block and add indent to the left of your text under Text Style and Bullet List. Then modify the block further. Let me show you one more design idea with circles. I'm going to make five copies of the shape four in one color and the last one in another, indicating skill level. Then I will make five copies and adjust the colors to match my expertise across the categories. Occasionally, when dealing with small section, the automatic indent spacing may not work well. That's precisely why I love tailoring the space or indent amount manually right in the box. Now I'm going to copy over the two expertise section to my resume and change one of them to indicate my language skills. Lastly, you can also add a shaded rectangle with adjusted opacity to either left or top of your resume for a subtle touch of flair. Now, we imported all these template resume to Keynote so that I can show you how you can use them for inspiration and replicate a lot of the styles and objects right in Keynote. I'm going to add a rectangle and use the color picker to find the color in this template. You can save the colors used by selecting the color and dragging it into the saved color boxes. Then I'm going to replicate the other boxes and create a shape for my headshot frame. If you want to add a border to an image, you first have to add the border to the shape under Format, Style, Border. At this point, don't remove the fill. If you remove the fill, you won't be able to fill the shape with your image. Sometimes you see these visual icons indicating a timeline. You can easily replicate them in Keynote by selecting a shape, making multiple, and then selecting at least two and going to Insert, Line, and Straight Connection Line. This line and the objects are connected now and you can easily adjust its position and spacing as you see fit. Let's try to replicate some of the design section in this template. Now another tip is to lock your template in place under Arrange option so that the template doesn't move while you're working on designing your assets. If you want round corners in your shape, choose the second shape next to the square. I can easily import my headshot here and adjust its size, cut out sections, etc. I can also remove background of the image as well by importing the image and then under image selecting remove background. Another thing you can try is if you like the font that is being used is to try to recreate it by testing the different fonts in Keynotes. Another trick is to add some character spacing to titles or headings under text and more text options. Let's try to replicate one more resume template with a more artistic feel. When you are working on replicating the design object, save the colors used, then under style, decrease the opacity of the template so it is not distracting while you are designing, and then lock the template in place. Another useful alignment tip is to go to view and show rulers. Then you can drag the guides onto your page and align objects better. Once you no longer need them, you can just select the guides and drag them off the page. To create a push pins, add a circle and then align. Group them and resize it as you want. Finally, if you want to create a two interwined letters, pick an interesting font, resize the first letter, then make a copy and add your second letter. I will add a filled circle and a larger circle with no fill and a border in the same color. Then I will place the two letters on top and move them to front and format as needed. And voila, we just created another neat design to add to our resume. 
Thanks so much for watching.